We're going to be doing our chapter six, uh, lesson two problems today about centripetal force and objects going in circles. Um, I have our first problem here, and since I like you guys so much, I chose to do the longest problem, uh, aka the one with four parts. Uh, I'm also wearing a Creighton hat to celebrate Creighton's men basketball being ranked 25th in the nation with a five and one record. Um, so maybe Ty can get our basketball team there next. Um, so here's our problem. A boy ties a 58 gram tennis ball to the end of a light string that is 65 centimeters long and whirls the ball above his head in a horizontal circle is shown at right, which I deleted it. I'll draw my own picture. The boy exerts a force of 5.2 newtons on the string and keeps the ball moving in a circle at a height of 1.7 meters above the ground. A, we're going to determine the speed of the ball, and we'll get to the rest after we solve for A. Um, the first thing I need to do is I need to change some things um, and kind of talk about some of the numbers I was given. Sorry about the cat. Um, all right, so the one uh, point you guys brought up today, um, they're saying it's a light string because they want us to ignore the mass of the string. Um, again, that's because you guys are in high school and we tend to want to ignore things that are too complicated for you. So the string doesn't have mass, but don't worry, it's still holding the ball. Um, so we have a dude and that dude is swinging a little thing in a circle. And I know his arm shouldn't be bent like that, but it's my dude. Um, 58 grams is a terrible number because that's not in kilograms. Um, so I would divide by 1,000 to get to kilograms, and I would have my mass of 0 0.058 kilograms. Other numbers they gave me that aren't super great are 65 centimeters, which if I divide by 100, I have 0.65 meters. Um, so we're going to move it in a circle. Um, he exerts 5.2 newtons on this string. Um, so my force that he's exerting is going to be 5.2 newtons. Um, for right now, sorry that too so awful. Uh, for right now, I'm going to ignore the 1.7 above uh, the ground. So we're going to determine the speed of the ball. Uh, I am giving a force, so I'm given the force. I'm also given the mass. Um, which it would let me find acceleration using one of my equations. I'm not looking for the acceleration though, I am looking for the velocity. Um, and I could find that using a different equation we're given. AC is equal to the velocity squared over the radius. Now, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my force, which is 5.2. I'm going to set that equal to my mass of 0 0.058 times my acceleration. I'm going to take 5.2, divide that by 0 0.058, and I find out that my centripetal acceleration is equal to 89.7 acceleration because we used the correct units, is going to be measured in meters per second squared. Then I can bring that down here. I can say that that 87 point, or 89.7 is going to be equal to my velocity squared over r. Uh, we're given r, which is 0.65 meters. So I would multiply by 0.65 to get, to get rid of my squared, and I would find out that the velocity is equal to 7.6 meters per second. B uh, is asking two kind of conceptual questions, which I'll talk about real quick. So suppose that the string breaks as the ball swings in its circular path. Describe the motion of the ball if, one, the instant after the string breaks, and two, after the string breaks, but before it hits the ground. So. The instant after the string breaks, you guys might know this one, if the ball is going in a circle and all of a sudden the string breaks, the ball will go in a straight line. So my answer would be inertia would take the ball in a straight line because we no longer have the string pulling in and, and accelerating it in a circle. The second part, after the string breaks but before it hits the ground, so this is where I would need to consider that 1.7. 
like any other projectile, the tennis ball is going to have some kind of parabolic graph. So I know it didn't rise, but it's going to go down in kind of half of a parabola. Now, this next part, how long will it take for the ball to reach the ground? I'm going to need to consider my 1.7 meters and um, kind of set up one of those tables. So for now, I'm going to ignore um, the velocity I just found because this is our velocity in just the x vector. So in our y vector, uh, I'm going to set it up. My initial position is going to equal 1.7. My final position is the ground, so 0. Um, I do not know time. I would really like to know the time, considering that's what the question is asking me. I know the velocity initial in the y direction because we're saying the ball is staying an even 1.7. It's not falling. It's not rising. So my velocity initial in the y aspect is going to be 0. My velocity final, I don't know that, but I don't really care about knowing that. Um, and then lastly, my acceleration is going to be a standard negative 9.8. So I'm going to look at my equation sheet. I'm going to think to myself, what equation can I use if I want to know time? And I don't know velocity final. And like a lot of our equations, I'll realize that I can use the equation xf is equal to xi plus 1 half a time final squared. My velocity initial is zero, so I can cross that guy out. He doesn't matter. Um, my final position is zero, so my final position is going to equal 1.7. 1 half times negative 9.8 is negative 4.9. And then times my time squared. I would subtract 1.7, and I would get that equal to negative 4.9 t squared. I would divide each side by negative 4.9 to get rid of that. And then I would take the square root to get rid of my square root sign. And I would find out that once the string broke, the time that it took the ball to hit the ground would be equal to 0.59 seconds. Now, the last thing that it asked me is how far will the ball travel horizontally before it hits the ground. So in this way, I'm not considering rising or falling at all. I'm only worried about horizontally or my x. Now in our x um, direction or in our x axis, there is no acceleration. So we don't have an acceleration accelerating because we're ignoring air resistance. So I can use the simple equation where the velocity is going to be equal to the distance or the time. I found the time to be 0.59 seconds. I do not know the distance, that's what I want to know. And I found my velocity early er, to be 7.6 meters per second. So by multiplying by 7.6 times 0.59, I can find out that the ball would go 4.5 meters. And that's about as long and as difficult as one of those problems gets. Uh, our second problem for today, uh, we actually have a special guest for you. It is her birthday tomorrow, and she is going to help you solve this problem. Uh, she says today for you guys watching this video, tomorrow for me right now. So um, Grace Rance will do this next problem for you. Hi. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, what number is this? 33? They don't know. They don't know the number. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so this problem says two people are riding a merry-go-round. One person is riding close to the inside edge of the platform, and the other is riding on the outside edge. The platform is 5 meters wide, and the whole merry-go-round has a diameter of 20 meters. The merry-go-round is making one rotation every 90 seconds, and we would like to know what the centripetal acceleration of each rider is. So first we're going to draw our picture of our merry-go-round. So that's a bad circle, sorry. One. So we've got one rider here 
on the inside and one right over here on the outside. And they told us that the platform that they're on is five meters wide, so we know that this distance is five meters. And we know that the diameter of the whole marigold round, this whole thing, is 20 meters. So that gives us two radiuses. We know the radius of the whole thing is going to be 10 meters. And if this is the center, we know the radius of this first rider is going to be five. So we have R1 is equal to five meters. R2 is equal to 10 meters. It also tells us that the Marangle Round is making one rotation every 90 seconds. It is the time that it takes to make one rotation, and that is going to be that 90 seconds. Capital, it's capital T, guys, sorry. Capital T. Um, so when we look at this, we have R's and we have T's and we want to know what our centripetal acceleration is. So we're going to use the equation on your sheet for AC, which is equal to 4 pi squared R T squared. And we have to do this twice because we want to know the acceleration for each rider. So we're going to do it for our first rider. AC is going to be equal to 4 pi squared times R for our first rider, which we said was going to be 5 meters. That's going to be 5 meters. And we're going to divide by t squared, which we said was 90 seconds. So we're going to divide by 90 seconds squared. And when you do that math, you end up getting 0 0.024 meters per second squared. And that will be your centripetal acceleration for the inside rider. On um, the outside rider, let's make a little box here. We're going to do the same thing. Um, obviously, the time that it takes to do a rotation is the same. The only thing that changes is the radius. So we're going to do the same math. AC is equal to 4 pi squared times our radius, which this time is 10 meters, and divide by our capital T squared, which is going to be the same, that's 90 seconds. We're going to take 90 seconds, and we're going to square that. And then when you do all of that math, you end up with 0.049 meters per second squared. And so those are going to be your two accelerations for your two little guys in the miracle round. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, I'll see you in class. Uh, bye. <laughs> All right, turn this off. Evan, stop taking pictures.